Hey everyone, this is Chris Keys for PremierGuitar.com, hanging out outside of Chicago just before the Green Day Tour with Billy Joe's Tech, Hans. How you doing, Hans? Very good, man. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for uh, taking the time out before the tour rehearsals to show us uh, all the gear. So let's dive right into the guitars. Uh, the guitar everyone likes to hear about most is Blue, Billy's guitar he got many years ago for his birthday. And it's the same guitar. He's still playing it. There's a pic of him there on the back. Is there anything particular he's done, I guess, in recent mes recent history? Because I'm sure he's done a lot of stuff to it. Uh, I replaced it's a Seymour Duncan uh, SH4, and just sounds great. And uh, not not really much. I mean, this is the biggest mod having the pickup angled like that. It's a completely different sound than having it just straight, like on a Les Paul. What do you think it, he, he gets out of it? What does he prefer? What do you hear? Well, with the angle. I'm still trying to figure it out in my mind why why it sounds that way, but it just does. It's something different. You know, like Eddie Van Halen, same thing. His guitar has the the pickup angled. But, and what songs is he using on this? Is probably traditionally the older stuff. All the older stuff, yeah. It's all E flat. And what about uh, strings? Uh, uh, tens. Okay. We're using uh, Ernie Balls. Ernie Ball. Yeah. All right. Uh, next guitar. This guitar was the guitar that got broken in Las Vegas, and I put it back together for him because it's it was the first one that Gibson made for him of this model. The signature? Yeah, so the signature without the signature. So that's it, all one piece. What does he typically use uh, on terms of songs for this one? This is all the newer stuff. Not only the three albums, but it could... Well, let's see, let me find a set list. and. Uh, is there anything particular that you know of uh, regarding the pickup? I know that Gibson designed a special that H90 models there. Actually, yeah. honestly, that guitar just has a plain P90 in it. Oh, right. It doesn't have the what's it called H90. H90 yeah. yeah. So this is an average set here. So 99 Revolutions, new album. Know Your Enemy, 21st Century. Stay the Night, new album. Stop the Red Lights Flash. So this first top of the set will be like, you know, one of those the Double Cut Junior or something like that. And then we get into here uh, Hitching a Ride. That'd be the beginning of the uh, the E flat songs with blue, and then uh, we go back to the you know E tuning with uh, juniors and stuff like that. So the difference pretty much is just the flat uh, the E flat to E standard tuning. Uh, yes. All right. The classic songs and plus it's I mean tens on a Fender and tens on a Gibson. So you know the shorter scale length makes it appear it has a little less tension. This is one of his signature guitars. And we had a guy in the bay paint the body, and that has a, I believe, a Seymour Duncan antiquity in it. And then this is a guitar Gibson put together for Billy. I don't know, they were talking about making it a model, I'm not sure, but they're 137, but with P90s in it, and simplified controls, just volume, volume. Is it stuffed with anything to, nope. for feedback, we or stopped. I'm sure they probably... We, well, the guitar actually, you know, it's kind of a, Solid box. a, a block box. down the middle of it and stuff like that, and so... Plus, a guy with Billy, I'm sure he um, enjoys the feedback versus, you know, some Absolutely. guys that might want it to be pristine. Uh, just a 59, double cut junior. You know, we, we like them getting them when they're a little more beat up like this because then we can put the, the pin there because back here it's pretty much useless. Is this one, uh, was this helped at all to design the, the signature that Gibson's doing now? Mm, I don't it think a different so. uh, double cut? I think, I think when the last time we went to Gibson, probably like three or four years ago, we were just hanging out with uh, uh, Pat Foley, going through the U.S. the USA shop, and uh, he just he just kind of picked up one of their run-of-the-mill juniors and just kind of said, "Hey, how about we do this and this and this?" And it took him about two years to get the thing out, but that's what that that guitar is the the first one they made of that. And then this guitar, I'm sure everyone will recognize, uh, Black Fifty Five, and that has probably another antiquity in it as well. And then here's something new, a Rick 360. He loves playing this thing. Uh, Is there a spot on the set list or a song that he might nothing, gravitate for? Nothing specific. Uh, okay. You know, newer stuff. Uh, again, simplified controls, just a volume. And then we haven't seen too much acoustic yet, but uh, playing the... Uh, the J180, which was actually like the Everly Brothers guitar. And I think this is a fantastic live guitar. You know, people say that the, the extra pick guards and stuff kind of dampen the tone and so forth, but I think for live, 
it's great. And it also, I think Everly Brothers' dad designed this bridge where the strings barely break over that bridge. You never have to worry about strings breaking or anything like that. It's just really nice guitar. Makes your job a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. I still change the strings every day on it, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind then. <laughs> so. And what about in the front here, the, all the way in the front? The, this guitar? Yeah. Okay, this is... A, this would be a... Uh, we gave a shitload of these away on... This was, this is basically just the spare for blue. So, same pickup, simplified controls. And it's actually made out of a blackout Telecaster. Oh, okay. And then I just get the pick guards from uh, WD and... I'll probably end up making five or six of these over the tour. Because he'll either give them away or they get wrecked or something like that. <laughs> so, pretty much disposable guitar. All right, Hans, you pulled this one off for us because you said it hasn't been used yet, but you're working on it and it could potentially it be could, seen. It could potentially be, yes, on stage, playing. Sitting near you. <laughs> or just hanging out in the case, I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, we just picked this up uh, on eBay, a guy in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, Tell us exactly what it is. It's a Martin GT70. And I guess uh, it's a guitar they, they made probably like 67, 68, just for a few years in the mid 60s. And uh, yeah, it's all right. I mean, it's a bolt-on neck guitar, so it's it's a little different than their what they're known for their acoustics, but yeah. it's quite an oddball, so it's perfect for uh, our needs. Is there anything <laughs> that you've done particular to it that you've needed since uh, Billy's brought it on board? Uh, all I've had to do is a fret level on it. Uh, I had to do a neck press on it, the neck was way too straight, so. It would just buzz on the first five frets. So, uh, anything particular that you know about at this point, or at least what they are, the pickups? Uh, the Armand pickups. They got a little different shape of the uh, the cover there, kind of give it that forward Chrysler kind of look. So, cool. well, but um, it's bright. It's a it's a very bright pickup, but lots of adjustment in the pole pieces. Well, it looks like that's it for guitars. Uh, do you want to shift over, I guess, to amps? Okay. Yeah. We run two heads into two cabinets. Our front of house guy doesn't want all the guitar blasting into the vocal mics and stuff. So our back line is actually here. So these two are Billy's. Those two are Jason White's. And then Jeff Matika plays out of that last one. The one sitting on top is just, you know, is, we had an extra. Is there anything specific, uh, I guess, with speakers versus, you know, Billy to Jason? Are they the same they're to get same. that same? They're, um, these cabs are really old. And honestly, nothing sounds better than old speakers that have, you know, that it can be like five or six years old, and these could probably even old, older than that. Do you know which they, uh, speakers they are? Thirties, pretty much in everything. Yeah. These heads, actually, these heads were at Woodstock back in what year was that? Ninety-four, or whatever it was. Uh, Pete and Meat, but I repainted them and stuff for a uh, what was it? Some other show they did. So, anyways, uh, the mods in this, we call this the Dookie mod. It's also the Bradshaw Gain mod. What, I guess, it, I mean, to divulge a little, you know, secrets, uh, it cascades but... cascades the front end okay. and puts a master volume on it. And then this mod, the SE lead mod, that adds a tube to it for even more gain. And the way we set, the way we run the heads, I mean, there's really only one way to... If you, this is it, you know. All the knobs pretty much straight up and the master and gain at, like, 10 o'clock. You turn it up any louder or any more gain, it doesn't really sound that great. And Billy's tone really isn't about tons of gain. It's not. It's it's actually cleaner than you, than you would think it is. His technique playing and using the pick is more where the sound comes out of it. And he'll turn the guitar down and clean it up and, you know, pop it back up. So, the main sounds we have for Billy would be this clean tone, and then we have a middle tone. And the clean and the mid are actually from this preamp here, this, uh, the custom audio. What's the S3 Plus SE thing? We only use the top two channels. Uh, our clean channel and then the mid. And we're trying to mimic, like imagine like a small 10 inch combo amp just cranked up all the way. So like all the lows are cut out, all the mids are up. So that's where you're getting the preamp power and then the, t the heads are for the power? Uh, what that's we've done is uh, we had all the heads modded with a uh, preamp out, power amp back in. So we can swap out preamps and always use the Marshall power section. So. Uh, the mid sound would be like the, the top of American Idiot, that ding, 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 ding. Okay. and then it blows up into the big, <laughs> the big sound that we have there. And then the only thing effect-wise, we were doing a delay and some stuff for uh, Kill the DJ, but we're not doing that at the moment. The blues driver, and that's it. And I'll just kind of, depending upon the song, manipulate that just to get feedback or gain or whatever. I mean, it's, we have 
one, this head actually runs two cabinets in the back line. They're not all plugged in, but one of them actually is, and that helps him get a little more feedback and stuff like that. Welcome to Paradise would be a... I was going to say, is there anything that he does specific to get, you know, those tones, or is everything pretty set, and he gets, you know, from Welcome to Paradise out to Make Out Party from new albums? Nothing really changes as far as this stuff goes. Other than the three main sounds, all the changes come from swapping guitars in his hands, yeah. That's, that's about it. All right, so how is this all wired up, and how are you getting the signal path all the while and, uh, from the amps, pedals okay. to... We, we come in out of our wireless into a RJM IS-8, which I'm not sure if it's the actual production piece, but he made a couple of these up for me. It's an 8-input input, input switcher, because you've got to have a lot of channels. And then uh, those outputs go split off either into input for the 3+, uh, or the two inputs on the Marshalls. And then using the looper, so here's our clean channel. Uh, we've got the SE input is open, and then the left and right SE outputs go into each power amp of the Marshall. And so our mid is the same signal path, but we're going into the second channel, which is our sort of mid, mid rangey kind of tone. And then our big channel pretty much takes this out of the loop, and it's just the Marshall front end into the Marshall power section. And then our effect, we just switch in a, that blues driver pedal. And uh, using one? the RG16 is, our, yeah, is the other unit, and then the, uh, the mastermind. When is the the boss pedal kicked on like any particular songs or is it just whenever his solos okay. uh, pretty much you know uh, I mean there's there's situations where I'm going between you know clean and big like this much you know to to keep things you know like, really quiet and loud and so forth and so on. it's it's the impact you know the, these heads you know this one set up a little cleaner I mean Chris explained it over there uh, you know sort of a vintage tone and this would be more of like an 80s metal kind of sound and blended together you can get a lot of punch and a lot of impact just hitting a chord and uh, again a lot of that is Billy's technique and how he plays I mean you saw this black guitar you know the front end just ground ground in there you know I'm wondering and uh, you know the wood between the frets wearing away and a lot of a lot of pick powder everywhere and uh, I forgot to ask before, when we're going through the guitars and strings, uh, what about picks? Uh, we, the Dunlop Tortex 73s. It just has his mug on the front. Yeah. We always do kind of different stuff. But this is the first time we went for the, uh, the multicolor imprint pick. So, thank you, Dunlop. All right, well, thank you very much, Hans, for taking the time to show us uh, the rig. My pleasure. All right, we're over here at Jason White Territory with his guitar tech, Chris. How you doing, Chris? Very well, thank you. Thank you uh, for do, taking the time to show us uh, what Jason's using. Uh, talk to us about the guitars right off the top. Uh, his main guitar is this older 50s Les Paul with P90s. Okay. And we have the gold top kind of version as a backup is P90s there, as well. Is there anything specific uh, that he's changed in that, or is that pretty original? No, it's pretty original. Pretty, pretty beat up, but it sounds great. Um, we have a... Les Paul with humbuckers that we use on a couple of other songs. Any that jump out on top of your head? We'll use it for letter bomb. If he's doing more solo stuff, we'll use the the humbuckers, you know, for a little more cut cut through sound. We have the silver tone that we use, which is kind of thin and jangly that we use on a couple songs like uh, Stray Heart and Kill the DJ, okay. kind of disco-y sound. Yeah. And then um, we have a couple of 335s with the Fishman acoustic pickup that we switch back and forth between for, say, King for a Day and Minority and Jesus of Suburbia. Um, we use a stereo cable for that. And we use the Fishman acoustic preamp for the acoustic side. And then the electric side goes into the front end for the pedals and the amps. Is there, are you just using it as a preamp, or is there? Are you guys actually selecting? Because like I know that Fishman does like their image t technology. Are you guys selecting yeah. any specific images out of that? Yeah, I mean we have the dreadnought that we like. Okay. It's pretty much straight out to the board. Okay. We don't use any other preamps with it. Just feed it straight to the mix. Gotcha. All right, and for strings going through the whole uh, lineup here, anything, anything particular from each model, or are they all the same? Um. On the guitars that he uses for the leads, we started using the hybrid slinkies, so they have a little lighter on top and heavy on the bottom. 
so it's 9 through 16 on top. And the uh, the rest of them, just for more of the rhythm stuff, we just use the regular Slinkies, 10s, Ernie Balls. And the black Les Pauls we use for the drop D-sharp tunings for the old songs, basically, off of Dookie. Uh, that's pretty much it for his guitars. The only uh, acoustic sounds that he uses are from the 335. We use this one on Boulevard when we use a capo on the first fret for the tuning. And then uh, Minority switches between clean and dirty, clean and dirty. We use for that. All right, uh, last thing about the guitars before we move on to amps is uh, picks, of course. Uh, what, what's Jason using for guitar picks? He has his own custom picks. They're, I think they're .73s, just like Billy's. It's about the same gauge. Okay. It's just a different logo on the front. Uh, all right, looks like we're looking at Marshalls again here. Tell me about these ones. It's basically the same heads that Billy uses. We've got the Dookie Mod Marshall and the SE lead on the bottom. And uh, the thing about them is the same with Billy's and Jason's is they're always used together. We never use one head by itself, so it's a blend of the two. Typically, it's a little more crunch, vintage sound, and this is more a little, little higher gain, you know, a uh, little fuller, I guess, and then blending is just real nice. You get to cut through and then the deep, sustained kind of beefiness. Um, is there uh, anything particular in uh, how this one's dialed in versus, or how these two are dialed in versus Billy's? Are they similar or are they kind of purposely set up a little differently? They're a little different. I know Hans keeps his kind of straight up. Um, I do a little bit of scoop on the mids, on the SE lead, and if, if you see the preamps are pretty low. Uh, we, the, the gain, like he was saying, is actually pretty low. You know, we just kind of crank the master a bit, so it breaks up. But okay. it's not a super heavy, you know, overdriven sound, which you'd be surprised because when you listen to it, it's so big and full. Yeah. You don't need all that gain to get that sound, you know. And then we use the Custom Audio S3 uh, Plus. Same deal with the clean channel on the you know on the first one. The second one we use is the kind of mid broken up combo sound. Okay. And uh, we have a boost, which is basically just kicks in a a little boost pedal you know for on leads. Okay. What, what is that? I've never. A Chandler okay. Limited Little Devil. Yeah, it's what's real nice. What's in the back there? Just a couple extra things we keep around that we never use, a little harmony pedal and a phase 90, but basically we use this for the acoustic and that for overdrive and it's just 95% of the sound is just these two amps. Okay. And then the rack mount uh, Crybaby wall then? We have a wall that's, you know, remote for the rack here that he uses at the end of uh, Boulevard on the solo and I have an alternate preset set for that that I can turn on and off depending on what preset I'm on. For example, like Boulevard, clean actually engages the acoustic. And then that goes to the electric. The alternate preset kicks in the delay unit okay. on the solo. What is that delay down there? Is it the line six? Oh, okay. It's pretty simple, just you know what eight. settings is he using it on? I see that a lot like of different parameters. Triplet, basically. Okay, so yeah. Simple. Nothing crazy. Just a bam, 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 you know. Is there, and uh, how's this all wired up and everything in your rack with the RJM there? Yep, everything goes through here. You know, some loops on the front end. We've got the wall pedal, harmony pedal, phase 90, which we never use. Wall and the boost are the two. Switch between the electric and acoustic on the 335s. We've got your 3 plus here, which is this. We use the function switch to switch channels between one and two there, you can see it changing. Mm -hmm. And basically, uh, the Echo Pro's in there. Both both Marshalls you can see are always on, the Dookie and the SE lead. And that's it's pretty simple, that's about it. And uh, I see volume as well that he has, which is a pre-volume. Yeah, just a mute for changing guitars and stuff? Yeah, tuning. He'll, he'll back it off a bit when he's, you know, because uh, Billy does a lot of eye contact stuff with the band where he'll do this to bring it down and you know he'll back it off on the volume pedal. All right. And the last thing I guess is the wireless. What's the sure? Yeah, I think these are pretty new. The UR4Ds. But uh, pretty much everything is wireless. You know we switch with the input selector here except for the 335s because we use a stereo cable to go between the acoustic and electric sound. And that's about it. Thank you.
Well, thank you very much for your time, Chris. Cool, Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. All right, we're over here with Eden. How you doing, huh, Eden? Hey, great. All right. <laughs> we are over here in Mike's area. Talk to us about what Mike is using for bases. I guess we'll start with bases. Well, he's got his signature base here. This is uh, these are pretty badass. These are his uh, latest model. He's got other ones coming out soon. So this is a production model. Yeah, this is the Mike Dirt base. This is uh, with the maple neck, which just came, with which we just got, which are real nice, man. And um, and then he's got okay, and these are the old ones. I say it's the '69 in there. This is the ones he plays um, for the old songs. And yeah, this is a '58. This one is real nice. His wife gave this to him for his birthday. This is a beautiful bass. It's a pretty nice wife. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, when he gave it to me, he's like, yeah, fix it up. Let's get, take that out on the road. What did you do to it to get it up and ready well, for the road? The um, the pickups that came with it weren't working, so I switched them out with the with the Fender pickups that I use for all the other ones. But when I did it, it kind of hurt my feelings, you know, because this thing had never been touched oh. and all original solder and all original wires. And... Um, but, you know, I just unsoldered it at the pickup and put these in. The, I sent the other ones away. They should be coming back any day now. I'm going to put those back in. But, man, this thing sounds great. It's beautiful. Is there anything different that he does besides tuning for um, setup or anything between the, the bases that are used for the oh, yeah. old material and the new material? Yeah, the old material we tuned down to um, we tuned down one step. This bass is the bass that was played at uh, iHeart Radio Festival. When, and it got smashed and broken in half and we I glued it back together and uh, it sounds great <laughs> it sounds awesome and uh, Is there any particular songs that he uses this one on um yeah all this all this stuff all the new stuff and it's pretty much you know when, when we're yeah when we're doing the show he starts off with this one or this one and um, and we switch them out, and then I got these two also, for now. And then when it comes to the old songs, I got these. So whose incredible Hulk mask is that? That was thrown on the stage. I don't know. <laughs> Just liked it. <laughs> we get a lot of stuff thrown on stage. So Mike, uh, he's always coming up with ideas, and uh, so he he called me, and he's like, "How about a black neck on a black body with a black pickguard?" So uh, we called Fender, uh, called our guy Billy Siegel over at Fender and asked for a black neck. So they, they painted this neck and I put this all together and uh, I think it looks cool. This one, he, he, he asked me, he's like, how about, a, how about a leopard pig guard and kind of a you know, skin color body? And um, so I was looking all over for some kind of uh, leopard material, and I couldn't find anything that looked cool. So I painted I painted that leopard on there myself, <laughs> and, um, and put it on. Stencil or is it freehand? No, freehand. And then uh, I showed it to him, and he really liked it. He used it in uh, Kill the DJ video. Oh. Yeah. And all, and then all of his um, signature bases that we've seen here, and all the production models come with the badass two bridge then too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can go out to the store and buy these. I mean, when I get them, they're pretty much ready to go right out of the box. You know, just do intonation and a little couple things here and there, but these, these bases are great. Just general setup stuff, nothing? Yeah. Yeah, just minor things like raise the, or lower the pickups, but other than that, they're good to go, man. Those things are solid. And then these are his signature amps here, the uh, Super Bass Man, and these are great. And they've he helped um, design them. And um, how does he t uh, typically run them in terms of setup and you know settings? Yeah, well, it's uh, you know we got overdrive, and then we got clean. But the clean is still pretty, you know, it's got some, it's got some good uh, punch to it. And um, these these amps have won awards since they've come out, and man, Fender is just like so happy with them. They're great. Does he run both of them at the same time, or is no. the other one just a backup? Backup, yep. And then I got another backup standing by, just in case. And um, yeah, these come with the uh, yeah, and then we play them out of the cabinets over there. 
and uh, yeah, he he helped design the whole look. And was there anything that he specifically wanted tonally, or anything like controls or aesthetics that you know of? Like the pool, he he he, pretty much everything. After the after the last big tour that they did, um, he sat down and wrote a letter to Fender, and pretty much uh, you know told them what they've been doing right and what they used to do right and what they. Uh, what they should do and 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 you know and make it look cool and and he helped he was like helped design the whole thing and man it's a great amp and, and people love it and uh it's doing really well man it's a good seller glad to hear that they got his letter because i wrote a letter a couple years ago and i thought it got lost with the one that i wrote to santa so at least they listened to mike i guess <laughs> right, right yeah what, what does he use for uh, string gauge and string uh company's uh, brand we use fender and um yeah. Is there uh, any effects that Mike's using? No. Nothing? Straight out. Yeah. That's the beauty of designing your own amp. Yeah, <laughs> you don't need anything. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, in the bass cabinets? Do you know what speakers he's running in those? Yeah, Fender, Fender stock speakers. I should have I guessed it was Fender all around. Yeah. All right, well, Ethan, thank you very much for your time. All right, thanks, dude. Thank you. All right. This is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar. If you want to check out more rig rundowns, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if not, well, come back some other time.